as I promised that uh, we will discuss a bit uh, about uh, these uh, topological uh, states in, in matter which have uh, uh, become extremely important in condensed matter physics uh, of late in the last 15 years and uh, some of these uh, were actually uh, known for a long time uh, and then uh, only recently last year uh, uh, three physicists got Nobel Prize for uh, bringing this, this topological aspect of uh, uh, systems to fore uh, and uh, bringing people's attention onto these systems. And uh, these were Kosterlis, Thaulis and uh, Duncan Holden. And the first such example was actually uh, done by Kosterlis and Thaulis in the US and Berezinski in the uh, former USSR. And what they showed was really remarkable. As I said that uh, marmin wagner theorem uh, for example, uh, tells you marmin wagner theorem this we discussed a bit while we were uh, doing spin systems, magnetism uh, and uh, long range order and so on. What where we mentioned that if the order parameter which means this the for example, the average spin here uh, or magnetization has a continuous symmetry, uh, then you cannot have uh, uh, a long range order in any dimension less or equal to 2. So, for example, that means that uh, of course, Ising model does not have this continuous symmetry, it is only up or down spins can have 2 values. So, that can have an order, uh, order state uh, in two dimension also and that was a famous solution. <coughs> Whereas, uh, take for example, the next uh, higher model. So, suppose you have j s i dot s j s i dot s j and this is s x s x s y s y s z s z and out of which Ising was only the s z s z part where the other two were. Uh, thrown out because the j has huge anisotropy and j z was much larger. But now, suppose j x and j y are both uh, large and j z is very small, then this model will become j x s i x s j x plus j y s i y s j y. And then if I can put j x and j y if they are similar or same. I can put them as just j as some some j and that model is is called a uh, or called an x y model because it has only x and y component of the spin. So, that means, the spins have is uh, can rotate in the uh, x y plane that means, they have a continuous symmetry and uh, in such cases cases you uh, you are told by Marvin and Wagner that you should not have a <coughs> long range order. Of course, you go one more which is Heisenberg model uh, where all components exist that is uh, that has full SU 2 rotational symmetry of the spins and of course, and classically it has uh, it can be anywhere on a on a sphere the spins can point in, in any direction on a sphere uh, and that means, you have a continuous symmetry and you cannot have uh, order uh, according to Marvin Wagner theory theorem. Of course, uh, what was shown by Kosterlis and Thaulis was really remarkable. They showed that indeed that is true that you do not have a, a <coughs> uh, order of, uh, of this type that uh, long range order, but certain correlations uh, become algebraic uh, below the below a certain uh, temperature in 2 d x y model. Uh, and uh, what they found out that there is a there is a phase transition of a different kind of a topological kind, uh, where vortices start forming inside the in a x y model uh, in two dimension and these vortices and anti vortices I will show you what that means uh, bind themselves uh, at the at a particular temperature and that temperature they called T c a transition temperature. So, it is a it is a transition of a very different kind it is a vortex binding unbinding transition and uh, a very simple argument uh, shows how a classical uh, x y model in two dimension uh, has this kind of uh, <coughs> vortices and a state with vortices 
uh, is actually of lower a free energy than the uh, normal state where without vortices and uh, this, uh, this, this argument can be presented very simply although the actual transition is much more complicated it is a vortex binding unbinding transition. Uh, at a finite temperature and that finite temperature that means it in terms of marvin wagner theorem you should not have any transition at any finite temperature so therefore this was the first example uh, that was worked out where you indeed uh, have a transition uh, of a topological nature at a finite temperature in a 2d xy model where marvin wagner theorem prevents uh, long range order at finite temperature so let's see how it uh, works the 2D model and the classical model is very simple. The S uh, is is a constant length, so it's like a like a moment. It's a vector uh, SI and SJ, and therefore you absorb the S squared term inside J and write cos theta i minus uh, theta J. And these uh, SI dot SJ is just the cos cosine of the angle between the two, <coughs> and the S squared term is absorbed inside the J. Now, uh, of course, it is nearest neighbor model i j are summed over nearest neighbors. The continuum Hamiltonian you can write after from this uh, where uh, the, the theta i minus theta j is very small. So, you can uh, expand it and uh, you can then uh, uh, get a grad theta square right because if you expand cos theta it will give you theta i minus theta j square is the first uh, uh, theta dependent term. So, that is basically gradient of theta square. Now, you can uh, some E 0 plus j by 2 grad d r grad theta square. Okay. So, now we uh, know how to tackle such problems. So, we minimize with respect to theta set to 0 and the equation that you get is del square theta r equal to 0. Now, we know from that such, uh, such uh, situations uh, you can have a, tri a trivial solution like theta r equal to constant okay. does not depend on r at all that is of course, an, a solution, but there is another solution possible where grad theta r uh, integrated over a closed loop around a singularity which is called a singularity uh, is 2 pi times n and that defines the vortex actually. <coughs> so, let us see if uh, what this solution uh, gives. Again, this is basically the again this uh, the single valuedness of the you can think of in terms of uh, theta changing over a circuit and it comes back to the same place. So, uh, it should be 2 pi times n. Uh, <coughs> so, for a vortex uh, uh, in a vortex this this is uh, interesting that uh, grad theta r dot d l is basically 2 pi r which is in, in a circle over a circle times the uh, uh, <coughs> magnitude of uh, change in theta. Okay. Uh, since uh, theta r is not uh, dependent on the angle by the symmetry of the problem because the problem has whole x y symmetry it is symmetric on a plane. The Hamiltonian if you look at uh, the Hamiltonian j x and j y are the same. So, no, nothing to distinguish any particular direction over a circle in the plane. So, that means, uh, you can just uh, write theta of uh, vector r is actually theta of r only uh, there is no angle dependence. So, <coughs> so, that means, over a circle it remains a constant uh, circle of radius fixed radius you change the radius it will change again. <coughs> Therefore, you can uh, you, your solution is grad theta mod of grad theta uh, is uh, n by r because there was this 2 pi r. Okay. So, now you can evaluate uh, the, the energy because this is this is the Hamiltonian. So, that if you evaluate you can immediately show that uh, this is pi n square uh, j log l by a where l is the size of the system and a is the size size of this vortex. Okay. So, how does this vortex look like this is uh, a picture of uh, two vortices. Uh, uh, actually uh, so these and these for example these two vortices you, you can uh, look at these two have uh, spins uh, moving around them in a, in uh, and changing their direction of uh, uh, directions you see in, uh, so it it goes around in this this fashion and changes to 2 pi uh, when it comes here comes a full circle 
in this one it changes the same way, but in opposite sense of rotation. So, the sense of rotation here in this one and in this one are just the different. So, these are called vortex and anti vortex and if you come bring them together you can easily see that these uh, two rotations will cancel each other and you will again have a uh, background spin which has uh, no rotation. So, this is these are uh, the vortices the solution is grad theta is 1 over r or n by r uh, that is well known. <coughs> and then that is what the singularity I was talking about r going to 0 uh, is a singular point. <coughs> Now, if the, the, the energy then is uh, log L by A, so A is the size of this vortex, you can think of the size of the vortex uh, beyond which the spins have all healed up uh, to they have no idea uh, there was a there was a vortex here. So, they have healed basically uh, they, they have healed back to the nor their original states and that size is called the A, so size of the vortex basically and L is the side of size of the system. So, that is the energy of, of forming one vortex. Okay. So, E vortex minus E 0 is uh, this much. Uh, now, of course, this is uh, uh, this is positive uh, if uh, as L is greater than A, uh, but uh, look there is a entropy correction you have to take care at finite temperature. So, that is uh, the free energy is E minus T s the Helmholtz free energy is uh, e minus T s E we already got. So, the f is uh, uh, E 0 plus this pi n square j log L by A uh, <coughs> minus this entropy con contribution. So, k b so minus T s now how much how is s how does one find out s s is very simple uh, how many ways uh, how many places can you put this uh, vortex in size is L. Uh, so, the linear dimension of the system is capital L. So, L square is this area. The typical area of a vortex is S square. So, L square by S square is the number of ways you can put it in and log of that into K b is the entropy. It is as simple as that and then you just multiply by T and uh, subtract and this is what you get. So, this is the total energy. Now, you can see that for t less than pi j by 2 kappa b, so you set this to 0, this coefficient to 0, the free energy will diverge to plus infinity as L goes to infinity. But at temperatures t greater than pi j by 2 k b, the system can lower its free energy by producing vortices. F goes to minus infinity then as L goes to infinity. So, there is this uh, possibility that you can have vortices. Uh, you can lower your energy by having vortices, but of course, this is a very simplified way of looking at it. In reality, it is not uh, a single vortex that forms. Uh, <coughs> there, are, there are vortices of uh, uh, plus and minus both sign, the vortex and anti vortex proliferates at certain temperature. What happens is that the large uh, larger vortex pairs which are bound together for temperatures below T k T, this temperature is called T k T unbind at T k T. So, this actually in the real system they showed that uh, there is a transition from vortex binding to vortex unbinding and uh, this is uh, this is basically a collective effect, but this is the first example that we know of uh, where uh, a topological transition has been predicted where the Marmin Wagner theorem actually predicts uh, it is also a rigorous theorem it produce there is no usual long range order at any finite temperature, but of course, there is a topological order and that is uh, there. So, this is the this is a, f a fundamentally important concept in, in uh, physics uh, brought about by uh, these three physicists Kostelis, Thaules and Berezinsky. Kostelis and Thaules uh, are still alive and they uh, got uh, this uh, they got the Nobel Prize. Uh, for this discovery <coughs> for this work along with uh, some other work on topologi topological uh, features uh, uh, of uh, materials <coughs> which uh, let me just come to uh, discuss. So, there is this topological insulator that you must be hearing for quite some time and this is this has taken us by storm actually, uh, but it was all already there when one uh, uh, the concept was already there when one uh, discussed uh, um, Hall quantum Hall effect. 
because if you remember uh, in the quantum Hall effect we were discussing states which were uh, uh, moving about at the edge of the system. Even when we discuss uh, Born von, uh, the uh, von Luen Bohr uh, ideas of uh, absence of magnetism, we discuss this skipping orbits uh, at the boundary. So, those are called edge states, we will come to that. So, it starts from this uh, Kramer's theorem. Uh, a, it says that a time reversal invariant system with half integer spin is at least doubly degenerate. Okay? So, that means that if you have this time reversal uh, operator which is an anti unitary operator uh, introduced by Wigner actually, uh, uh, it uh, converts a plus state to a minus state. So, so let us, so this is the time since time reversal uh, operation uh, is a symmetry of this system. So, we can define a state as an eigenstate of time reversal operator and it converts a minus state to plus state. Uh, t has two eigenstates. We will not get into the, the details of this. Uh, if T is a symmetry of the Hamiltonian, the two states plus and minus are degenerate. Uh, and uh, it also and one can also show that plus minus are orthogonal. So, they are two independent states. Okay. So, that is Kramer's theorem. theorem basically, it says a spin half system uh, with time reversal symmetry is doubly degenerate. So, that is all we need to know. So, the classical picture I had outlined uh, long back uh, that there are these so called skipping orbits and the bulk uh, there are these bulk orbits the, their effects get cancelled out and these, this effect of skipping orbits uh, uh, cancel the, the, the big orbit coming from the bulk. So, that was the classical picture. In the quantum picture, uh, these are called these edge states are called chiral edge states. They have a chirality. I will come to it. What it means? Chirality means they have a direction uh, dependence. I mean, so we will will show it uh, show you what it is. So the, let us discuss in presence of magnetic field at the moment. So magnetic field violates time reversal symmetry. So we are not yet at the uh, Kramer's uh, degeneracy level, but we are just discussing a time reversal symmetry violated situation like in integer quantum Hall effect, where we, we these uh, these edge states uh, 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 are important. And I will show you in a strong magnetic field, uh, the periodic carrier motion is quantized, and that is what we found out in uh, in quantum Hall integer quantum Hall effect. A skipping trajectory transforms the classical skipping trajectories now transform into a quasi one dimensional edge channel encircling the interior of the system. So, the what the analog of this in a quantum situation uh, of the skipping orbits classical skipping orbit is the uh, this this uh, edge uh, edge uh, traject edge uh, this basically quantized skipping trajectory uh, into a quasi one dimensional edge channel. So, it is an edge current as you can see. Uh, that is flowing uh, in encircling the entire system. So, the, this is directive because you see magnetic field is in this direction. So, the motion has to be in this direction, current has to be in uh, this direction, the rotation has a has a particular sense. <coughs> so, the directiveness of this edge state is called the chirality. So, the dissipationless quantum Hall transport is naturally attributed to the chiral edge states. Of course, we have seen that quantum Hall effect is a quantized uh, current, quantized um, uh, conductivity and that means, uh, this is basically due to these chiral edge states that are capable of carrying the electric charge without scattering. Remember that quantum Hall effect was so well quantized, it was a one part, three parts in a billion or so in the initial experiments, it is much more now. So, that means, there is no scattering. So, tau was set to infinity remember and hence without ge generating any resistance along the edge and the necessary condition for that is the absence of mobile bulk carriers. So, that means, in the bulk you should not have a mobile carriers of which these, uh, these edge channel electrons can exchange energy by scattering. If the, if the bulk has a gap then the even if you scatter of those electrons the those electrons will not be able to take any energy from you because they have a gap at the Fermi level. So, they cannot go up there is a la large energy transfer that has to happen to take them out of the uh, beyond the gap. 
and that is exactly what uh, this is and therefore, these edge modes of quantum Hall effect must occur in a uh, in the energy gap between the bulk bands and that is the picture that uh, uh, is shown here. So, with a B strong B this is the situation that there are these edge modes chiral edge modes which carry the current uh, and they do not do not dissipate energy uh, with the uh, carriers in the bulk because the bulk carriers are all gapped. Now, uh, the question is uh, that of course, I have to set B equal to 0 to have real interesting physics here, because the topological insulators are situation where the there is no B uh, externally applied. <coughs> so, this is made possible uh, by uh, spin orbit coupling and that is what is interesting. So, the unlike the quantum hall systems uh, discussed above the 2D topological insulators feature edge states in 0 magnetic field that is without breaking the time reversal symmetry. Uh, this is possible due to intrinsic spin orbit coupling in T i materials. Uh, the spin orbit coupling can be viewed as uh, uh, an intrinsic effective magnetic field that points in the opposite directions uh, for up spin and down spin. So, this is really interesting. So, is something called a spin orbit coupling which we remember in Huhn's rule we discussed it third Huhn's rule was about spin orbit coupling. And uh, in that case, you can think of that as an effective magnetic field, but uh, in opposite directions for spin up and spin down. So, this is the picture that uh, for spin up electrons, uh, the sense of rotation then will be in, uh, in one way uh, at the edge <coughs> for the chiral edge state and spin down electrons uh, have the other sense. So, you can think of it as, as two quantum hall integer quantum hall systems one for spin up one for spin down moving in opposite directions and they are uh, they do not uh, talk to each other because they are protected. <coughs> so, so these gapless edge modes uh, uh, uses two copies of a quantum uh, hall insulator with gapless edge modes resulting in a pair of edge states in in a total in a zero magnetic field. So, this uh, the defining feature of the edge states in 2D topological insulator is the locking between the spin and momentum direction. So, the this is this is what happens if you have spin orbit coupling uh, sigma and p are uh, no longer good quantum numbers it is the sigma dot p which is uh, conserved okay. and uh, that uh, that results in the locking of sigma and p. As you see if sigma dot p is conserved then their directions uh, uh, the direction is locked. <coughs> if p changes direction sigma has to change direction also and vice versa to keep this dot product constant. <coughs> so, this is referred to as uh, helicity ok. Such a helical edge state form a Kramer's doublet. Now, because there is no time reversal symmetry violation these two are degenerate states and uh, they uh, are the, the Kramer's doublet uh, two degenerate Kramer states that I mentioned in the beginning. <coughs> so, the energy the E versus uh, momentum uh, looks like this the bulk is uh, of course, uh, gap full there is a gap uh, there is uh, and the edge states uh, uh, are these two edge states now with spin up and spin down uh, moving in opposite directions. <coughs> so, that is the band structure. So, this is a schematic band structure of 2D Ti's with helical edge state. This can also be thought of at as a spin hall effect because the two spins are moving in two different directions uh, up and down. So, there is a spin uh, so spin directions are different. So, up spin is moving this way down spin is going the other way. So, there is a spin imbalance that can happen of course, in a closed loop that will get uh, that will not happen, but uh, there is uh, uh, at any point at any any point of time you will see that the two spins are moving in uh, opposite directions so con uh, uh, continuously. So, that is a remarkable situation and it is actually called is also called uh, quantum spin hall effect. So, this is uh, uh, <coughs> owing to the spin momentum locking in the edge channels the electronic state of the 2 D T i is also called quantum spin hall effect observed in A G T uh, quantum well structures. <coughs> So, this picture actually shows it in B equal to 0 this P s up. So, s dot P uh, when is conserved. So, that means P has to maintain is if s remains up then P has to maintain in this direction 
and then if uh, is s is down in the red then uh, p has to maintain in this direction so the 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 again the momentum the the electrons are moving in two different directions that is also the that is the hallmark of a hall uh, system right but it is uh, due to the spins and the spins uh, are forcing the uh, up and down spin are forcing the momentum to be in two, two opposite direction and that is uh, this law this is the locking that is being talked about and this is also called quantum spin hall effect. <coughs> So, the 3 there is of course, the 2 D is, uh, uh, is already known in the sense that uh, when one uh, did uh, quantum Hall effect uh, one actually realized this that there are these uh, edge states so which are uh, uh, chiral edge states and they have this feature uh, they are uh, gapless at the uh, edges and the in the bulk there is a gap and so on uh, all that was sort of understood in the 80s and early 90s, but uh, about 15 years back uh, uh, the 2 d 3 d topo time reversal invariant topological insulators was uh, was predicted. And uh, remember when I mentioned quantum hall and edge state we still had no time reversal symmetry. So, the quantum spin hall effect uh, is when the b was 0. So, time reversal symmetry was uh, intact. So, that is different from quantum hall, but uh, that is attributed to uh, spin orbit coupling. So, that was understood uh, <coughs> uh, this was understood uh, uh, late uh, the, the fact that edge states uh, are the ones carrying current in quantum hall effect was understood in <coughs> 1980s and early in and there on. But uh, the fact that spin orbit coupling can do the same in a time reversal symmetry invariant system uh, was understood in the uh, early 2000s uh, <coughs> by Charlie Ken and uh, Mele had a series of papers and many others Bernevig and so on and so forth. Uh, the there are beautiful reviews on this you can uh, look up the literature. So, there is the now a 3 d time reversals uh, invariant topological insulator uh, which is basically transfer the bulk is it the whole thing that was happening at the edge will now happen at the surface. So, that is the that is how it is done. Uh, so, these are materials where strong spin orbit coupling gives these surface uh, states these two states uh, are at the surface the bulk is uh, gapped and uh, uh, these are uh, for example, from graphene we actually knew that there are massless Dirac fermions Dirac kind of spectrum right. And uh, so, this massless Dirac spectrum has this these such features and uh, you can write a Hamiltonian for that uh, uh, for this kind of a situation. Uh, <coughs> so, Dirac these Dirac cones are robust under non magnetic perturbation. So, all that happening is that there is there are these edge states at the surface which are gapless whereas, the bulk is gapful. So, these are uh, 3 d topological insulators and there are systems where people have found it B i s B B i t B i s e and so on. So, one can write the surface Hamiltonian for these kind of uh, systems which is very much like uh, graphene and uh, uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, massless Dirac mode and as you can see that here also you have this uh, uh, spin and uh, momentum locking and uh, the <coughs> minus s and plus s uh, have different directions of momentum. So, there are two such states. Uh, pair of protected states these are these states are topologically protected because they by Kramer's theorem they are uh, they have the same energy and uh, by the fact that the Hamiltonian has this uh, chira, this uh, helicity uh, which is conserved uh, they have to maintain it and because the bulk is uh, gap gap full there is nothing to scatter with and that is exactly an analog of this 2D 2D edge states which was a uh, one dimensional edge here it is a surface two dimensional surface where the same thing uh, uh, more or less happens uh, and the Hamiltonian is this and for example, and then you have these uh, surface states which are uh, protected and uh, their momentum and spin are locked and uh, as I said they have a gapless uh, metallic region at the surface because of these states and these are called topological insulators so, uh, in three dimensions. So, this is now an active area of research and uh, if you are interested you can go up and look uh, look at uh, 
uh, lots and lots of literature on this. So, this basically ends uh, the discussion of uh, electronic theory of uh, solids. I only could give a glimpse of what is uh, happening and how things are happening. I have avoided discussing experiments uh, in detail because this is to give you the microscopic uh, theories and un basic understanding of uh, all the electronic processes, uh, of the ones which are important and which should be discussed uh, uh, in a condensed matter course. Uh, and then uh, of course, uh, uh, we also discuss this uh, physics of spins and of course, uh, superconductivity and uh, uh, topological systems a bit. And uh, all this is basically electronic, all these are electronic processes. Uh, the spin is tied to the electron and, uh, um, and every process that we discuss is an electronic process. <coughs> so, and in some cases the degree of freedom is such that the, the charge degree get, uh, gets quenched, the spin degree is the only manifested degree uh, that one should look at. Uh, for example, in insulators, in uh, magnetic insulators and so on. So, this, uh, these kind of ideas that in a real system, uh, this beautiful quantum mechanical physics plays out and uh, all these degrees of freedom uh, can be manipulated, can be used and they have their manifestations uh, in beautiful new exotic properties is what I wanted to convey to, to you. Uh, we will uh, um, end here and I hope you enjoyed it, I did it myself and thank you so much.